Hi, everybody. My name is Brett Gildersleeve, and I am not a video game developer. Uh, in fact, I had very little to do with roguelikes up until a few months ago when I uh, sat in my room for a week. I, I had work and stuff, but I sat in my room for a week in the evenings uh, making my first ever game, which was also coincidentally my first ever seven-day uh, roguelike because I figured, like, get it done, right? Seven days, let's do this. Uh, and so the title of my talk is Rogue Space Marines. That's the name of my game. Uh, procedural prefab level generator or borrowing slash stealing great ideas from Spelunky. Um, so since uh, you know I'm not a, a video game designer, actually this is my day job. Uh, I work at a company called Source Audio and I design guitar effects pedals. I have a background in electrical engineering and I'm a guitar player. And uh, I spent a lot of time, Lee will like this, uh, programming microchip PIC 18F 45J 50 8-bit microcontrollers with 32 kilobytes of program memory. Yeah! So uh, I do a lot of that. So maybe I'll have to make a, a microcontroller rogue, roguelike next year if I can, if I can hack it. Oh, yeah, one bit sound. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. So. Um, Anyway, I'm going to just show a little bit of my game, and I actually have a slightly better video here. Uh, so in case you haven't seen my, my game, this is uh, Rogue Space Marine, and it is kind of an uh, action-oriented roguelike. It's very fast. Um, it is turn-based, but uh, there's also this kind of real-time element to it, and uh, it has these kind of interesting mechanics, uh, at least I think they're interesting, of... Uh, one hit point mechanics and uh, abilities with cooldown timers and other things like that. So it's uh, kind of a different take on your traditional roguelike formula. Um, and I made it because, I don't know, just seemed fun. So anyway, that's my seven day RL. And um, we're having technical difficulties. Sorry about that. Um, Anyway, so I got a lot of great feedback on my game, and so I, I thought I would come talk about it. And um, honestly, I'm talking about one part of my game that isn't all that unique, um, and it's the level generation techniques that I used. And actually, they were inspired heavily by uh, Spelunky. And Spelunky uses this system of mixing handmade uh, prefabs or templates and procedurally generated content. And basically what that gets you is the best of both worlds because you have a lot of control as the designer for creating these kind of finely crafted experiences. But if you, if you include enough random elements, the player never really sees the same thing twice. You can play Spelunky for thousands of hours and you'll never really feel like you, you know what's coming, right? So that was the goal. Um, but that wasn't the first way that I went about it. Having never made a game before, I tried the traditional approach for starters. Uh, it's a roguelike, right? So it should look like rogue, right? <laughs> so uh, I started with rectangular rooms connected by hallways. And then um, you know, I, I made my game mechanics. I made my uh, abilities, the enemy AI, the line of sight stuff. And then I started uh, playing. And, and this is kind of what an early uh, view of my game looked like and I started to try to play it and it was not fun at all. Uh, you'd like run into a hallway and then you had nowhere to go and then anywhere, everyone was closing in all around you and you had nothing to do, <laughs> right? So there's no cover. There, there are these long hallways which are death traps, right? It was terrible. And um, you know, that's when I realized that game mechanics and architecture kind of have to go hand in hand. And you can't just take this architecture and try to force it onto your game mechanics if they're not compatible. And that's what I was doing. I was trying to take rogue architecture and force it onto rogue space marine gameplay, and it wasn't working. And the reason is that uh, pretty much every enemy in my game has ranged attacks. And there's this one hit point mechanic. So every time the player is hit, you lose an ability, of which you don't have many. And when you lose all of them, you die. So in enemies, one hit kills them. So it's super high stakes. You don't want to get hit, right? So in a game where you really, really don't want to get hit, it's terrible to not have any cover and have long death trap hallways, right? Uh, in the architecture of Rogue, which I was trying sort of foolishly to emulate, um, 
has large open rectangular spaces, long narrow hallways, right? So this doesn't work. And I, I started just, I am not really a programmer, right? So I, I started just trying to hack a few modifications onto this formula by putting some cover in a few places, and it really was not helpful. I realized I had to try something else, and I was running out of time um, because seven days to make a game, I had set aside two days to make the level generation, right? Um, and so the first day was kind of a waste. So that's when I had my aha moment. I realized that I needed to design the level architecture to meet the needs of the game mechanics. And in the case of my game, that meant a mix of tight and semi-open spaces where you could hide behind things and get behind corners and then kind of jump out and take the advantage when the time was right. Uh, some cover to aid in protecting you from range, ranged attacks. And try to avoid open uh, spaces at all costs. So could I have written a wonderful algorithm to do this all for me? Yeah, probably. Maybe if I had more than two days to do it. Actually, one day, because I wasted the first day trying to do what Rogue does. Um, oh, sorry, short hallways. Yeah, right. Um, so because I had limited development time, that means I was going to borrow somebody else's idea. Um, and I'm not ashamed of that, because uh, imitation is the best form of flattery, right? Um, so I look back at games in my past, which I thought had really cool level designs and had maybe somewhat similar mechanics to my game, and actually Doom, not Doom RL, but Doom, uh, came to mind. Doom RL is awesome, all right? Um, but, you know, I, I played so much Doom in my life. It's, the, the levels are, yeah, the levels are just burned into my subconscious at this point, right? Um, and also Spelunky, which I, you know, am a huge fan of. And, uh, Spelunky is, is really the key element here, but, um, but Doom has some stuff to teach us as well. Start with Doom, just because I only have one slide about it. But the thing that really struck me about Doom, as opposed to the games mostly that came after it, is that it had this completely abstract, just functional level design. It wasn't trying to make anything look like anything in the real world, really. This is E1M3 from the Doom shareware, uh, and it just... It's supposed to be like a toxin refinery, possibly, but you can see just at the top, the very top room, just below the, the title of my slide here, there's this crazy pit with sludge in it, and there's this weird bridge that kind of makes a circle, and if you fall in the center, there's a health kit and a switch that raises up the sludge for no particular reason, and then the sludge magically turns into a floor, which makes no sense, and you know, it doesn't resemble like anything in the real world, but it was fun. It was fun to go across that bridge and have some guy shooting at you from a, a perch, which you could then later go to if you discovered this secret and, and whatever. And the thing that I learned from Doom was it doesn't really matter. Your, your rooms don't have to look like anything exciting as long as they're fun to play in. So that was, that was the first takeaway from Doom, right? And then Spelunky. Oh, Spelunky. Uh, so Spelunky as well, you know, is just completely functional level design. Um, it doesn't really look like a cave if you've ever been in a cave before. They don't, they don't really look like this. But, but as a player, you don't care because it's, it's fun. The, whole, the key point of Spelunky's level generator is to create spaces which are constantly fun to play and create interesting scenarios where lots of stuff can go wrong. Right? That's Spelunky in a nutshell to me. Um, so. For part of this talk, I'm going to be referencing uh, Darius Kazemi, who I, I let him know about this, and he gave me his seal of approval. Uh, maybe, he, maybe he's even watching right now. Uh, but he, he's a programmer. He went through Spelunky's uh, code, which is uh, available for free. And uh, he took a look at the level generator because he was fascinated by it. And he created these cool interactive tutorials on his website. I will provide the link to that later in the presentation. And uh, just really cool stuff. Um, showing how this level generator works. And I thought to myself, man, that's what I want to do. I'm going to copy Derek Yu because he's a genius. Um, so in case some of you are not familiar with Splunky, this is what it looks like. It is a 2D side-scrolling platformer, um, and it, it does contain some elements of roguelikes, most notably permadeath and procedural content generations, specifically related to the levels. 
And we're back. Come at you live from Atlanta. Uh, OK. So I was uh, just about to talk about Spelunky's excellent level generator. Um, so the cool thing about Spelunky is when you first play it, at first glance, it looks like a big single level, just a giant thing uh, with randomly generated architecture. And that's not true. It is a cleverly disguised uh, collection of 16 smaller hand-designed rooms which are stitched together to form a level. Um, and I like to call this multi-layered prefab selection. So basically, each individual element of every level is prefabricated by hand um, and then chosen at random and sort of populated uh, pseudo-randomly to create the finished product. Um, and within each room template, the, uh, there are these probabilistic tiles, anything from spikes to enemies to loot to you name it. Um, and so you have those, multi, mu those multiple tiers to go to together to uh, create the finished product. And the result is, at least in, in my sense, you have this finely tuned experience because every room has been individually playtested many, many times. Uh, but then it's jumbled up enough that it doesn't look like it's the same room every time you encounter it, which I think is really, really cool. Um, and here's just an example of what one room in Spelunky might look like. Uh, this is a, a type one room, which means it has entrances from the left and the right. Um, on the bottom, there are these red squares called obstacles, and they can be filled with these smaller prefabs, which are designed to fit within those individual spaces, which are s selected at random or sometimes not populated at all. And the top has these white squares, which are probabilistic tiles, which could contain something like spikes or a trap or, or who knows. So there are a few steps to creating a level in Spelunky. The first one is called the solution path. Um, and it's really hard to see on this screen, but uh, there's, a, there's a, oh wait, haha, -ha, there it is. I knew I made a slide. Uh, so the solution path guarantees that there's a way to get through the level, very important. It's fun to make roguelikes this is a roguelike like, I suppose. It's fun to make games challenging, uh, but uh, it's not really fun to make them super impossible. Some people will argue with me about that, but uh, <laughs> that's fine. So in the solution path generation, you start by creating a starting room and then an ending room, and then you have this algorithm that reaches out across the first row and finds a spot to drop down and reaches out across the second and so on and so forth until you've created a way to get to your exit. And then there are rooms called zero rooms, which are not on the solution path, but might contain additional goodies for the adventurous player who decides to go there. Second step is room templates. So for each room in the, uh, in the level, you choose, like for example, here are a number of type one rooms, right? So these are all handmade. They have entrances from the left and the right, so they can fit anywhere in the level that requires the type one room. Um, and you choose at random from one of those. Then, step three is you fill those, once you select a room prototype, or uh, you uh, fill in the probabilistic tiles like the obstacles. So you can see here, this is all one room. It's all one room. And I hit the regenerate button 16 or 12 times. And, uh, and you can see it's just filling with different things each time. So you, you get this complexity out of having multiple layers of simplicity, which is really elegant, I think. Um, and then the last step is putting loot and enemies in there, uh, which I'm not going to talk about because I'm more concerned with the architecture at this point. So anyway, overview, solution path, room templates, obstacles and probabilistic tiles, loot and enemies. So I saw this and I thought, that's genius. I'm going to take that and do that in my game. Um, the weaknesses is that the level is always the same size and shape, and the designer is never really surprised by the architecture because you're getting a grab bag of stuff you've already created. The strengths are, you can create this huge amount of content from the for the player for this small amount of stuff that you make, and the designer is never surprised by the architecture, which is awesome because that's that means you you know unexpected bugs are not hopefully not going to happen at least in this in this part of the of the program. Okay, so my implementation of this is as follows: my my levels consist of three by three rooms. I need a guaranteed solution path, even though I don't have an, a start and an exit in my game. Uh, the player needs to get to computer terminals in every room. Um, so you have to be able to get to every room. I like short hallway connections for gameplay purposes, and I use room templates. And instead of having these obstacles, I have these cover or decorations in each room, which uh, sort of enhance the gameplay and the look. So it's very similar to the way that Spelunky does things. 
Uh, and here, just a couple examples, uh, very zoomed out of what my levels look like. Of course, at any given time, the player can only see in a small uh, circle around them. But you know, some rooms are just boring old squares. Some are kind of curvy hallway thingies. Uh, and then there's some more exotic shapes. And you can see not all rooms have hallways connecting them to other ones that are adjacent. It's all, right? So it's, it's very simple, because I had to make it in a day. Um, but I, you know, it works very well for what I need it to do. Um, so I'll show you how I did that. I used a spreadsheet uh, to, uh, to kind of lay out my rooms. I knew I, didn't, I needed three by three. So you can see here the green ones, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, my nine rooms can be possibly connected with, uh, one, uh, with uh, one through 12 hallways. So you can see the places where the hallways could go. And then uh, those four spots in the middle are dead space. You can kind of see that here around the center room. There's always dead space kind of surrounding the center room there. Right. So here's just one example of what I might draw in my spreadsheet to create a solution path. I just type an H in, color it green, and if you kind of blur your eyes a little bit, you can see if you just look at the green, every room in the level can be accessed, but it's kind of a unique, interesting shape. And so the player won't know exactly where to go, right? It's something different every time. So once you've made this, uh, oh, right, this is just showing you that, yeah, you can see kind of your immediate vicinity, but you can't really see the whole level layout. So you're never going to know exactly what hallways you need to go through to get through the, le through the level. So once I've created that one solution path, I get five more for free because uh, I, can, I can rotate it three times, right? And then I can horizontally flip it and vertically flip it. And now, so I've drawn one by hand and I, I get six, uh, which is cool. Um, and so the way that I store that in code is I just kind of read through the different hallways and then I create my six versions. An H means put a hallway here, a zero means do not put a hallway here. So that's, and that's all stored in, in like a big table of possible solution paths in the game. So then room templates are done in much the same way. And this is where the, the real fun comes in because this is where the player is spending most of their time doing interesting stuff and you want to create a cool, my, my game is 100% about combat. There's no loot, there's no anything else. It's just shooting at things, basically. So I want to create a fun place for the player to run around and have a combat experience. So uh, again, in a spreadsheet software, I go in and I, I draw my room. So a comma highlighted in black is outer space. The gray O's are walls. Um, the blue D's are decorations. The green T's are possible locations to put a computer terminal. There's only one in each room. And then the red on the, uh, on the four sides of the room are possible entrances and exits, which go to hallways to adjacent rooms. Right? So I make one of those, and honestly, it doesn't take long at all. In the spreadsheet, you can just kind of draw stuff, and you come up with the, with the room that you like. Maybe you test it out, and then do the same trick you get this gigantic hundred and something character string for each room. Um, I'm not trying to make it on a microcontroller, so I don't really care how much memory I use. Uh, so <laughs> so it just, you just get this giant list of strings uh, for each room rotated 90, 180, 270 degrees horizontal vertical flip. And there's your room template. Um, and then the, the final step in the second to final step in the level creation process is figuring out where the hallways go I'm putting those in to connect the rooms together. And then finally, I put in the enemies, the computer terminals, and the barrels, the explody barrels, which are in there because I like Doom. So, uh, so that was the main kind of gist of my, of my presentation. The conclusions that I came to after uh, implementing this level generation technique was that, first of all, no one-size-fits-all approach to level gen will work. You really need to design your levels based on your gameplay if you want it to be fun. In, in my experience, that was true. Um, so, and that's what I just said again, sorry. Design your architecture to fit your gameplay. Um, and I did that by using handmade prefabs together with probabilistic elements to create a sufficiently randomized experience for the player uh, with no bad surprises for the developer. Sad part of that is you don't get any good surprises either, but for a seven-day RL, I'll take it. So uh, just credits and thanks.
these are all the things that I showed in my presentation, Rogue, Doom, Spelunky, those things made me who I am in a certain way. And Darius Kazemi for his awesome uh, breakdown of the Spelunky level generator, Orcs sci-fi tile set, which I used in my game. And if you are interested in my game and you'd like to play it, uh, that'd be awesome because it's free and that's where you can get it. So thank you very much. Thanks.